Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to the Hanging on to Hope podcast. I'm Brenda J. And I'm Karen Wonder. And we are HangingOnToHope.org. This podcast is intended as educational and is not psychological or medical advice. Always consult a professional when needed, and we disclaim any liability in connection with the instruction, information, or advice given. Amen. Amen. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Hanging on to Hope podcast. This is Brenda J. And this is Karen W. Today, we have such an exciting podcast. We're celebrating our 100th episode. We've created a special episode for our 100th show. And what's even more exciting is this episode falls on the week of Christmas. To celebrate, we brought to the show some of our most loyal and dedicated listeners. Today, we have some new guests who have listened to every episode and some returning guests. So today we have Jet Trudeau, one of our biggest supporters of the nonprofit and podcast and a recurring monthly donor. Thank you so much for that, Jet. So we have Mandy Hall, who is on our advisory board of Hanging On To Hope, the nonprofit, and is a big supporter of the podcast. And we also welcome back Nicole Wilkins from episode 12. She is a psychology major, former social worker, and abuse and breast cancer survivor. She also listens to every single podcast and is a great supporter of the nonprofit. We also welcome back Danielle Foreman from episode 43 on financial abuse as well. She's an abuse survivor and an expert in finance and listens to many of the podcasts and is a great supporter. So welcome to the show, everyone. Hello. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Yes. Yeah, thank thanks. You. It's great to be here. Thank you for being on our 100th podcast. This is a big celebration for us. <laughs> so hi, Mandy. Can you tell us how, why you started listening to the podcast and why you strongly support the Hang On To Hope nonprofit as an advisory board member? Yes, I'd love to. So I met you guys through a mutual friend and I work with women and children, sometimes men as well, but mostly women and children who find themselves in homeless situations, have been through domestic violence and just need help in several different ways in getting their feet back on the ground. And I just absolutely love how you tackle the subject of abuse because a lot of times you don't get such straightforward answers and you're just so raw and real and honest. And I love how you use your stories in order to help others. And I have sent your podcast to so many people who just need healing so desperately. And, you know, a lot of times when you're going through these really hard situations, you don't even recognize that you may be in an abusive situation. And your podcast really just opens that door for it to be discussed. Yeah, I love that. Thank you so much for yeah, thank you for sharing it. And that's just awesome. Okay. So Nicole, we just want to welcome you back to the show. Can you tell our listeners why you support the Hanging on to Hope podcast so much and the nonprofit? Yes. Hi, Brenda and Karen. I thank you for having me be a part of this special hundredth episode. First, I would like to let both of you ladies know how proud I am of you for starting this podcast and keeping the podcast going. It's such a blessing and you are helping so many people. It's no mistake that I met Brenda a few years ago at a Southwest Airlines work event. So I believe that God certainly places people in our lives for a reason. And I support Hanging On To Hope because it's such an encouragement to hear, learn, and grow from the stories and topics that are discussed. And even when there's an episode that doesn't directly relate to something that I have encountered in my life, I still always gain some type of knowledge or insight from it. That's awesome. Yeah, that's great. I feel the same way. Sometimes uh, some of the episodes are not a, a subject that I personally have struggled with, but you still, like you said, you learn something about it. So you can if you come across that you can share it with someone else. Yeah. And Danielle, welcome back to the podcast. Can you tell our Thank listeners? you. Yeah. Can you tell our listeners why you started listening to the podcast? And you you did our episode on financial abuse, which was awesome. Yeah, actually, you know, I started listening. I ran into Brenda at church, a mutual friend introduced us and I had shared at Bible study and she heard what I said and she's like, you need to meet this woman. <laughs> she has a story so much yeah. like yours. And I'm like, oh, okay. You remember that? And we were yeah. both looking at each and other so, like, um, I was like, yeah, that sounds great. <laughs> 
Yeah, I know. I'm like, I don't I know. And it's almost like you're at that moment. You're like, what do I say? Because I don't want to say too much. And what if, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, but yeah, just from there, I, I like just instant friends. And it was just amazing how God brings people in your life. You know, she was telling me all about the podcast. And then I was listening to him and she invited me to be on with you guys. And it also brought a lot of healing for me, just knowing that people could learn from the deceit, you know, a manipulation of the enemy. And it gave me an authority platform of, yeah, this is what the devil's tactics are. And this is how you combat it. And so I think this is just such a powerful podcast, because it's really just exposing truth, right? Yeah. And I think that's so needed. And all the episodes, I love listening to it. I feel like somehow you can relate to all of this. But I think it's so helpful for people to know they're not alone, because the enemy works best in isolation. And if you know there's somebody else out there that's gone through something similar, you start to recognize it's not just you and you feel a little less crazy. So I think this is just probably such a huge blessing to people that are going through something and can start to recognize signs of, you know, it's not me. (laughs) This is a spirit of manipulation or abuse or jealousy, whatever it is, there's an underlying cause. And I think this really starts to flag that for people. Yeah, it's interesting you said that because I was just listening to some of the older podcasts and Thomas Pride had said the opposite of manipulation is truth. And that really stood out. So yeah, that's great that you said truth as being one of the main things. Hi, Jet. Can you tell us why and how you started listening to the Hanging On To Hope podcast and why you decided to support the podcast and the nonprofit? Sure. So I met Brenda at my Bible study table at our church and just was really drawn to her and had some conversations. And although I've never been myself in a physically abusive relationship, I have a heart for that. I did grow up in an unhealthy environment and had my share of unhealthy relationships. I just really admire people that have the strength and that find a way to bring themselves out of that situation. And instead of perpetuate to break the cycles, break the chains and do better. Thank you. I just made me cry. I'm sorry. I do have so much admiration for you (laughs) and for all of you women and and listening to the podcast and just learning a lot. And honestly, Brenda, I mean, that has been me listening to some of these podcasts because Even though there was unhealthiness in my childhood and growing up and unhealthiness in the relationships I saw my mom had, I was not exposed to the physical abuse part of it. And so I've just been broken down listening to some of the stories. But I got emotional listening to some of the stories of what some of you women have gone through. And I just have so much admiration. And I want to learn. And just because I haven't necessarily been through that, I have met a lot of women who are experiencing that actually, and who have, and it's a great resource and tool for me to be able to guide them to listen to your podcast. And I know, Brenda, you, you go above and beyond and, you know, you just walk the walk with the women and you help them and you show them Christ's love and you show them hope. Thank you, Jet. So, hi, Mandy. Can you tell our listeners what podcasts or podcasts stood out the most to you and why? Yes. So I have to admit that I have one of those very generic answers, but I have truly just loved all of them. I find them completely binge worthy because they've just all been so fabulous. Like you were saying before, like you can just relate to something that's being said in every episode. And I've just been sending them to so many people, but just to name a few, I really, you know, I like the boundaries one, the emotionally destructive marriage, how not to be an ass and the untwisting of scriptures, just to name a few. I really appreciate the ones that tackle spiritual abuse in the church, because when you grow up in church and you're spoon fed the scriptures, it is so important to be a critical thinker and deep dive into them for yourself. And I think a lot of times because I grew up in the church, I had a fantastic upbringing, but as you grow in your walk with the Lord, like you realize, wow, we as a church, as a Christian, like I totally missed the mark on this. And it's still being taught today. And so just untangling those 
is so important and looking into even like the Greek right behind it and kind of doing that deep dive that maybe you've never taken the time to do and hearing the heart behind it and the references that they may be referring to. And there's just a lot of abuse that comes out of that. And I just really appreciated that as a lifelong Christian, like I really appreciated like, wow, we just got this so wrong. And it explains why there's so much hurt. So I did really appreciate the ones that tackled the spiritual abuse. Yeah, that's definitely my my passion too, because it changes the concept. So many, to me, spiritual abuse, so much of spiritual abuse is taking uh, scripture out of context. And when you read it in it, yes. it can have a completely different meaning. And I want to read, I want to know what was God's intention in that scripture. And so it is so important to know the culture of the day and understand all that. It brings on a whole different meaning. Well, I sent every I'm, man I know how not to be an ass. <laughs> and I... Yeah. I <laughs> I feel like 24 minutes to teach you how to be a good and safe man is worth your time. Yeah, I know. I gave my son that. Yeah. You have to read this book. I'm going to keep asking you because I want to. <laughs> until you read it. To your point, like I really appreciated the honesty. I love that you brought in men who are now like, oh my gosh, this was me. I was that person. I love that they were able to be open and honest about it. And they present a pathway out of that mindset. I thought that was fantastic. Yeah. 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 I that encourages a lot of men. Yeah. You, know, to yeah. you can do it. <laughs> you know, here's some men that have done it. Yes. So important. So Nicole, did you want to share something that stood out in one of the podcasts? Yes. Just like Mandy, all of them, like we've all said so far, there's something that you get from all of them, but just to name a few, like the ones about boundaries, the people pleasing, the spiritual abuse, the one that you had about dating. And it's so true. When you start to date again, the triggers that you come upon while dating and realize it makes you realize the areas that you still need to work on in yourself. And those areas that still need healing when you start to date and explore having another relationship after abuse or divorce. But I did go through and write down a few, of course, one that's very fresh in my mind because it was one of the most recent ones you guys had was explore journey to being loved. And one of the ladies talked about in going through her divorce, the guilt that she felt, the condemnation from people in the church. And I remember actually where I was and I was listening to that. I was in a hotel, you know, because I, I travel for a living and I had just come from the gym. And lots of times I listen to the podcast when I'm getting ready or when I'm just like decompressing, relaxing in the room. And it just, I actually kind of just sat there and kind of teared up because it made me think back to exactly how I felt when I was going through my divorce and, you know, the whole thing of the, it relates to the spiritual abuse as well. You know, the, the condemnation, the things negatively that were said to me in the church and how I was made to feel because I was in leadership. I was on the praise and worship team and very involved in the church. And the fact that I was going to go forth with getting a divorce and just I believe she said the same thing that I felt. I felt like, did I not pray enough? Was I not submissive enough? Was I not a good enough wife? I felt like I fell short somewhere because of course you see people out there that have these great testimonies that they did pray and God healed their marriage and he worked it out for them. So it made me have guilt, made me feel like, well, then I did something wrong because God didn't fix my marriage. When I have had to learn and tell myself that may be someone's story and healing may have taken place in their life and in their marriage. But unfortunately, that's not everyone's story. Right. And I just really had to realize that. But that that really hit me. I actually started to tear up when she talked about that because I really relate to that of that guilt and feeling like, did I not pray enough? Am I not good enough? Like, yeah. am, am I not being a good enough Christian and good enough wife? Because, you know, aren't are you just supposed to work this out, Lord? Mm -hmm. And the reality is it just sometimes doesn't happen like that. Right. Um, so that was definitely a recent one that I listened to that really touched me. Also, the one that you had about love, pray, listen, parenting your adult children. My daughter is 28 years old. I had her quite young. So we have always had a relationship where we're super close. And with that being said, I can be a little controlling. <laughs> <laughs> and uh <laughs> friend is my friend so she really? knows that so about no that. I about that ma mama <laughs> 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 so that's something that I realized and I know I still need to work on throughout life, throughout all relationships in my life, friends, my daughter. But I, that was such a needed podcast because we often don't 
think or talk about that parenting your adult children and yeah. what a challenge that can be for us you know that we have to let go of that control i no longer get to control aspects of my daughter's life she's 28 years old and i had to tell myself this isn't healthy i need to realize she's an adult and i need to just simply let go and sometimes i just simply need to pray for her you know i might want yeah. her to do a certain thing or if you did this it would be better if you had that job it might be better you know, those are my opinions. And she is an adult now and I've raised her to the best of my ability when she was younger and making that transition from parenting your adult children is definitely, I really appreciated that podcast because that's definitely a much needed one. And it was another one that hit home to me. And of course, the podcast where my daughter and her boyfriend Leonard were on, that is a podcast that's very near and dear to my heart because she was on and off dating Leonard for, I believe, about six years. As you can hear in his podcast, if anyone would like to listen to it, he struggled with drug and alcohol abuse as well as mental illness. So me being a psychology major and being her mother and working in mental health and drug and alcohol, I was always very against her continuing a relationship with him because I felt like, you know, you're signing yourself up for a whole lot. You're not only dealing with someone who has a mental illness, but now you're dealing with someone who has a mental illness and drug and alcohol issues. And that's just not something that I wanted my child to be. You're signing yourself up to deal with issues and difficulties and Fortunately, God really shown himself to be true and to be faithful and really kind of showed me that, you know, Nicole, you do need to let go of that control and really trust me because I did have a lack of faith of what God could do in their relationship and what God can do in Leonard's life. And it really taught me listening to his testimony and seeing where he is now, the man of God he is now and how there are times where she'll be like, mom, I can't believe like he'll encourage me on the days where, you know, I'm having a hard time and he'll like use scripture and just encourage me. And she's like, I never thought that that would happen. And of course, I never thought that it would happen either. So, you know, their entire podcast was just a living testimony of what God can do, even when I didn't think he would do it in his life or in their relationship. You know, so it was a very personal one for me because I definitely, and he knew it, I was not a fan of her continuing a relationship with him. But once again, God showed himself real in Leonard and Taylor's life. And I pray that he continues to do that. So that was a wonderful podcast that I think will touch many because I think there are many more people dealing with the dual, so-called dual diagnosis with the mental illness and the substance abuse. And it can be very difficult because lots of times they feed off of each other. Um, so that's definitely a topic that I'm glad that you addressed in that's the podcast. Awesome. Danielle? Yes. Hi, did you want to let us know what your favorite podcasts were and why? Yeah, so obviously there's a lot of them that are fantastic. <laughs> and so many topics are, I think, relatable for me. One of the ones, I'll just mention it because I think it's really important on EMDR. And I was kind of refreshed to hear more about that because I was in abuse therapy for like four years. And the last year and a half, I did EMDR. And it's interesting. I know people get different things out of it. But one of the things for me that really helped was walking through the pain and not just like in a therapy session, like walking through to get rid of it was huge. So I don't know if you know, how many people have listened to that one, but I think that's something that's, yeah, yeah, yeah really, really helpful. And I think kind of, you know, to piggyback on what Nicole was saying too, I think emotionally for me, I grew up in the church. And so hearing other women that have had bad experiences with kind of being shamed in church for getting divorced because your marriage didn't work. Yeah. I've been married twice. I'm on my third marriage. And, and the first time I married a pastor. And I, I very much was just shunned. Like everyone was like, it's got to be something Danielle did if it didn't work. And that was really hard for me to get kicked out of church. And I mean, there's just some things you don't really think are going to happen. And that's really scarring for people. I was very blessed in that I found a church that really took me under their wing and walked with me. Even though they didn't understand what I was going through, they really showed me generosity. And so I think there's also hope in that too, is that there is still men and women of God that that love God and are generous. And, and I think just leaving your heart open, that's probably the hardest part is when people have betrayed you to leave your heart open yeah. and realize that God still has other people. And honestly, if I didn't, I would have never learned generosity. I wouldn't be in the place I'm in now. 
and the Generosity Foundation wouldn't exist. And so I also like how in that pain of being rejected in church, God's like, that's just a couple walls. <laughs> that's not who I am. Yeah. And I think just kind of hearing that reiterated, I mean, it's emotional because you remember the pain. And so I think that's a really important thing that a lot of people don't want to talk about is the church is imperfect by any means. And there's a lot of times where groups of people are making decisions that they shouldn't. And so I think that's helpful for people to hear that and know that. And I think it's really relatable for a lot of people that are probably listening in. So I know it was for me, but that's why there's a ton of them. <laughs> yeah, we have so many yeah, podcasts yeah. on spiritual abuse. Yeah. The yeah abuse yeah. in the church. Yeah, yeah. totally. Thank yeah. you so much yeah. Danielle, for that. Hi, Jet. What's your one of your favorite podcasts? Is there anything? That's sure. Different? Uh, there's so many of them. I mean, obviously, I love the one where I knew the women through my church, the one with Tammy and Cindy oh, and Cindy. Yes. And then there's the one with Laura and oh. Tracy. So one of the episodes, part one and part two was he walks with me, Patrick Weaver. Mm -hmm. And there were just so many nuggets that I took from there. The residue and hidden wounds that most of us walk around with and carry. And like I said, even though I haven't been in a physically abusive relationship, there's trauma that I had to deal with in my life from my upbringing and, and things that happened. And I loved the fact that he talked about that, about trauma, walking around with hidden wounds. I loved the segment of it where he talked about lamenting and taking time for healing. Mm -hmm. And that typically the victims have only been in fight mode or survival mode. And that's what I always say. Like when I was younger, I was just constantly in survival mode. And at some point though, you have to take time to mourn and, and feel. And I loved what he said about survivors of abuse and trauma. You have to get to a point where you just fall into grace and yeah. trauma happens in the soul. I've never heard that before. Oh. And I love that where it happens. And if you seek the presence of God's love and taking the time to lament and recover and recoup and don't feel guilty for being selfish while you're in recovery. Mm -hmm. That's great. I love that. And I loved when he said the average person will continue on wounded despite their bleeding. And that was like so powerful to me because yeah. when you are in survival mode and then he also said they believe it's the good Christian thing to do. And I was like, wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I that, a lot of good nuggets. Yeah, he gave. powerful. <laughs> yeah. And then another <laughs> that really hit home for me that I could 100% relate to was episodes 36 and 37, part one and two, breaking free from body shame. Yeah. Ooh, that was like, there was just so much in that one. And I really love that because that has always been a struggle for me. And now I'm coming to learn too. And, and she did say it at some point in the podcast in that episode that being in gratitude compels me so much more than striving or wanting to make it better. It's the gratitude that compels me to treat it well. And she was talking about her body. Mm -hmm. And I don't struggle with gratitude. I have a very what I feel like is a very grateful heart. Yeah, you do. But there's something that happens when it comes to my physical body. And it's, when she said that, it made me really go, you know, I'm grateful for so much. But when it comes to my body, my my outer image, I always want to pick everything apart instead of just going, thank you, Lord. I'm so yeah. grateful. My yeah. limbs work. I can walk. I can, instead of every time, like, oh, you're fat. Oh, you're disgusting. Oh, you haven't worked out. Oh, you know, like, so part one and part two was huge for me. Those I could really resonate with. Yeah, our cultures, I mean, especially as women, I think our culture, all women can struggle yeah. with that because we're constantly being bombarded with, oh, this is what. That you know, podcast helped me like. a lot to just accept myself because yeah. yes. she's hard on themselves. Yeah. And hearing her story of what she was told that because she wasn't what, what the world says is the ideal. Right. Body, the message that she was given, you know, that her body wasn't good and that you know, that's her whole message is no, our bodies are good. Yes, yes, exactly. And she also talked towards the end of it about that, you know, she still struggles with it. And she has to remind herself and get in that place. Because she said that some of her worst battle seasons were when she was walking closest to God. And that's the enemy, you know, trying to diminish her and diminish her work and diminish the closeness she has to God. 
Does anyone want to say anything else about the podcast or their opinion? I was going to say like how much I love being introduced to new authors and teachers that Honestly, I'm like, how did I not know about these people? Like, they're, <laughs> these guys are incredible. And I just really appreciate you guys doing the research, reading these books and introducing them to everybody else. And they're so helpful. They're so informative. And, you know, you hear people telling their stories and you're like, oh my gosh, that makes so much sense now. Like why I was feeling that way or why I had that spirit check. Yeah. And it just like brings all this stuff to light. And I've just been so appreciative of that. And it's actually your podcast has introduced me and like people in my life. It's like, let us down these awesome rabbit trails, right? Like this, these rabbit holes to these other authors too. And you just realize like how much information is out there that is so scriptural and helpful and just makes you feel like, oh my gosh, I'm not crazy. This is amazing. Yeah. Thank and you, man. You can, thank you. Yeah. For, I just wanted to let everyone know who you were. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Mandy. So my favorite, I feel like the most impactful thing to me in editing all of them was the trailer that I did with Bob Hamp. If any of our listeners want to listen to it, the trailers are just one minute gold nuggets that I have sat and spent the extra time pulling what God shows me. And they're one minute long for all those abuse victims that can't think clearly or listen to a full podcast. I was playing some of them today and I'm like the one on boundaries is amazing. He says the most loving thing with Patrick Doyce is the most loving thing you can do is set boundaries. The one on with Anne Blythe just that we're putting up walls to protect ourselves from bad people and manipulators try to tell you, you need to let your walls down, but no, you're actually keeping your walls up to protect yourself from, to keep the bad people out because we're not keeping our walls up with our family, just with people we don't know. So there's a lot of really good ones from that. I really like the dating one. I agree with you on that. I like them all too. I, I was I was going back through some of the older ones because I hadn't listened to some of the older ones for a while. And I was like, oh, these are all so good. I mean, I, I couldn't even really, I, I don't want to, it's hard to pick a favorite because they're all so good. But when I was listening to, I know Thomas Pride to me stood out because yeah. of what he talked yeah. about with spiritual abuse. And he talked about the concept of the truth is far more important and more critical in helping with abuse victims than most would suggest that stood out to me because, and then he said that like what, what Danielle was talking about is the opposite of manipulation is truth. Yeah. It's just knowing the truth. And then what Sarah McDougall said, we are in a faith community and we have this massive emphasis on forgive, forgive, forgive. So much of the time we're not recognizing that Jesus had many other things to say about abuse, assault, and divisiveness about individuals who are unrepentant. And that's something that doesn't get talked about a lot in the church. So that's why I thought her viewpoint was so refreshing. And then the Gregors, that's my favorite yeah. subject, <laughs> open sex. Yeah, Karen about loves that. to talk about sex. <laughs> well, I mean, I just think that <laughs> sex gets talked about wrong. Again, like all the books I read, marriage books, Yeah, you know, we're t- emphasizing the man's needs, a man's needs, and it's very manipulative. Yeah. So I love how she brings out let's read the whole Bible and let's talk about what the Bible really does say about it. And one thing that stood out to me about her podcast is she said, Jesus never refused to look at a woman. What Jesus did was truly see women. So Jesus was very revolutionary with women. I did not know that that was abuse when my ex-husband was dominant in the church. And that was a form of abuse when you have to do whatever they tell you to do. And they use the Bible. It's also spiritual abuse because they're using the Bible to tell you that you have to do what they say whenever they say it. I mean, I love them all. There's not one that that really, I don't want to say is my favorite, but Celeste Tracy was also very special to me because I went to her as a counselor years and years ago. So to have her on recently was very, very special to me. Yeah, that was pretty awesome. And also Leslie Vernick, because her book was very validating. It's yeah. one of the first books I read that started connecting the dots. So to be able to interview her, I just get so excited when I get, you know, responses back to people like, yeah, we'll be on your podcast. Yeah. I do a little happy <laughs> dance every time someone responds. And that's as far as I got today, because I was going through all of them. But yeah. and so being able to discuss a book that you just get so excited about and be able to ask questions to an author is one of my favorite things about doing this podcast. And that's why I feel like there's never, you know, we're never going to run out of things yeah. to talk about because there's so many good books out there. I've got a list, you know, a mile long of books I want to read. And I, it's just so exciting how God uses different people on their gifts to help other people, like we've all been saying. So it's just been a blessing to be a part of this podcast. Yeah, we want to thank you guys all so much for being on this podcast, for supporting the nonprofit and listening to the podcast. We'd also like to thank you for any your financial donations. 
Without your support, we wouldn't be reaching 61 countries. Are there any other topics that any of you would like to hear? We'll start with Jet. You guys have done a terrific job of covering so many different topics. I don't know why I'm feeling one maybe on forgiveness, like true forgiveness. I think the reason we haven't done forgiveness is because so many people have different opinions about it. But Sarah McDougal does Mm. talk about forgiving without enabling. So does Jimmy Hinton. And Jimmy Hinton does too. But she also says that forgiving is giving the vengeance to God. So everyone Mm -hmm. has a different opinion about it. And I think that's what's been a little bit hard. Right. But yeah, we'll look into it and we just want to make sure that it's scriptural when the, well, before we read someone's book. And thank you, Jet. Oh yeah, Amanda, do you want to share? Honestly, like I just love what you guys have done so far. And I'm just always so excited for the next one. I, I can't really think of any of that you haven't really touched on, but I'm just excited to even dig deeper into the authors that you're finding is are just absolutely amazing. And I've just enjoyed every single one. Yeah, we're supposed to have some big ones coming up, but yeah. we're hoping... Yeah. We already got agreement. Nicole? Yes. For me, when I read that question, the first thing that came to my mind, and I think this is a podcast that both of you ladies enjoyed as well. And I think this topic you would like as well, being that you have adult children, but maybe digging deeper into a podcast with adult children and the guilt that you experience at times with past mistakes, relationships, and abuse you experienced with them growing up. I know that's a topic that's come up with me and my daughter, something that we still work through because of, for instance, my ex-husband and the abuse that she endured and how she felt that I chose a man over her and -hmm. allowed someone to abuse her. And I still, you know, she's 28 years old and I still have some guilt over that. And I think that would be a very interesting topic and help. I know I'm not the only parent of an adult child that you still are kind of working through that guilt that you have of being in a abusive relationship and how it affected your children. And then in turn, how how that affects me and my daughter. We may not have done that deep because I'm in this major triggering phase with my adult children right now. (laughs) I shouldn't laugh, but that's my coping mechanism is laughing. So Danielle, did you want to share anything? Any topics? Um, So yes, I think for me, actually, a lot of what I've dealt with lately with other people is, you know, you, you kind of get along in your journey. And I think for some people, they can recognize that they're getting abused. And somebody just said this a minute ago, I don't know if it was Brenda, but like finding the right time to leave. And I know I finally, you know, even now have to admit that me staying was selfish to my kingdom call. Mm -hmm. And I think this is really the difference between people that are motivated and make it out, recognizing they have a purpose beyond a marriage, beyond just raising kids. It's not just about you. And I think that the enemy beats you so far down, right? That you, you're like, you're just in survival mode. And it's breaking that mindset that God has a flourishing life for you. So I think focusing on that, I mean, I know it's touched on all the time. Yeah, we do podcast on that too, because I have in the middle of, we help emergency abuse victims a lot and they're still debating on whether to go or not. I've got someone right now. And when she listens to this one, it is that mindset when you're in the middle of it, you don't realize until you get out. And like, I didn't even to now, I'm like, what, what was I doing? And when I t- still tell people my yeah. story, they're like, why did you stay married that long? Someone said it to me last night. I'm like, I don't, I, I you know, you don't really don't know when you're in it. Your just mind is not clear. Yeah. When, when Nancy Galassini gun, when she was sharing, yeah, I was kind of jealous because I like when I was going to Celesta and she was starting to reveal things to me, I was, you know, she had left so much earlier than me. So then I had that regret of like, why didn't I leave then? <laughs> you know, cause I was, yeah. I was starting to understand it, but I understand now why I didn't too. There's a lot of reasons. So, yeah. So that's a great topic too, Danielle. Did I, you add anything else? I think it works for a, a lot of things. You know, I think it works for even people being angry or just anybody that's been through trauma, the real reason people don't let go. And it, unfortunately, for my husband and I, we, we deal with a lot of people that are military and law enforcement, and there's a lot of suicides. And it's one of the things that we kind of have to walk through too is, okay, you got to take a step back and realize, is it just affecting you? And I think that's just, it just helps get a lot more perspective and a lot more bravery for yeah. people when they realize that it's not all on you. But you also have to be willing to make a choice for everyone else. So everybody gets free. So, yeah. That's great. Thank you so much. We'd also like to thank all of our guests. 
authors, therapists, and real survivors. Thank you to Tahira Ogletree, Mike Forrester, Celine Bartolo, Kimberly Hash, Nicole Wilkins, Cindy McGee, Jessica Nicely, Eric Winfield, Gretchen Baskerville, Jennifer, Becky, Jimmy Hinton, Nagme Pahani, Caroline Abbott, Megan Owen, Patrick Weaver, Jamie Palmisano, Brian, Danielle Foreman, Gwen, Carol Wynn, Gigi Wynn, Joy Forrest, Tracy, Bob Hamp, Ann Blythe, Laura, Don Hopkins, Ken McFerrin, Brothers in Healing, Allison, Patrick Doyle, Lisa Michelle, Steve, Lori Jones, Leonard J. Sloan, Taylor Jones, Haley, Laura, Celeste Tracy, Nancy Gallasini Gunn, and Jessica. You're so brave, and our feedback from our listeners was that it was so healing to them, and so many could relate. A special thank you also to our authors, counselors, therapists, pastors, and trauma coaches, Lundy Bancroft, Leslie Vernick, Dr. Diane Lamberg, Sarah McDougall, Mary DeMuth, Kathy Lorzell, Ginny Larson, Andrew Ballman, Sheila Ray Gregoire, Rebecca Gregoire Lindenbach, Joshua Ryan Butler, Christine Wolgar, Heather Elizabeth, Rebecca Davis, Jennifer Raftis, Jess Conley, Chuck DeGroat, Hannah Bradley, Kylie Yanes, and Sophie Nicely, Remy Diederich, Scott McKnight, Laura Berenger, Michelle Donnelly, Tammy Moss, Casey Grant, and Stephen Tracy. A large part of the first group that told their testimonies are abuse survivors and also trauma therapists, pastors, authors, and coaches. Thank you for using your suffering to help others heal from abuse. We appreciate each and every one of you, and thanks again, ladies, for being on the podcast today. Without the support of you and all of our listeners, we would not be able to do this. Have a Merry Christmas, everyone. But I'm going to end this by playing Bob Ham's trailer because that is the truth about everyone that has been abused. And it's just amazing what he says. Today, we have Bob Hamp on the podcast. Bob is a counselor and the founder of the Think Differently Counseling, Consulting, and Connecting Center. Abuse doesn't happen to you because of something wrong with you. It happens because of something right with you. The abuse victims that I know and have worked with over these years are all generous, kind, thoughtful, patient. They're willing to be long-suffering, and their generosity and strength of character and the depth of their willingness to love and give is profound, and yet it is that very thing thing that an abusive personality feasts on. And so those characteristics in healthy relationships and cultural or social settings are beautiful and powerful. But when a predator sees those characteristics, it's a magnetic draw for that predator to come and say, here's somebody who's generous, kind, and willing to be long suffering. And one of the things that's good about every abuse victim I've ever worked with is they are deeply invested in making their relationships work. The problem is you can't make a relationship work with someone who's deeply invested in control. Yes. Right. I said, I'm in the restroom with a laughy face. <laughs> like she's going to do it from the restroom? No, she, I don't, I think she's in the bathroom. That's why she can't come on until the second one. Definitely have her mute her microphone. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to hear TMI. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to Hanging on to Hope. Check out our website, hangingontohope.org. There are resources on there. And if you would like to donate or volunteer, you can do that through our website. We are a brand new nonprofit, so we appreciate any and all support. And we thank you for listening. And until next time, keep hanging on to hope. We are evidence that there is hope and healing for you. And our passion is to help you find it too. So thanks for tuning in. Thanks for listening, everyone.